next on Abundant Life Today with Pastor Walter Hallam. When God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness, that he was not talking about angels. He was talking about himself, the Son, and the Spirit, or the plurality of himself. And he made man, and he formed him, the Bible says, from the dirt. He, he made him out of, uh, he made something out of nothing. Uh, he made something out of something. He formed him from the dirt. You and I were formed out of the dirt. Uh, uh, the scripture says, in the image and the likeness of God. Uh, the, the concept would be like the shadow or the outline, the form or the silhouette of God. It would be like me throwing my hand out here on the ground and right here I have an image. Uh, there's a shadow. If I stand there, it throws a shadow. Imagine God putting his own shadow on the ground and going and outlining it, forming it, making a man in that image and standing him up. That's what he did. He made man. So if you want to know what God looks like, look in the mirror. Abundant Life School of Ministry is the place to prepare for your purpose. As a student, you'll be equipped, inspired, anointed, and released into your unique calling. 
Upon graduation, you will work alongside a local church vision, continue your education to be used of God in a secular occupation, or even head to the nations as a missionary. Awesome alumni are currently ministering in nations around the globe and in the United States. Whatever God's calling is in your life, you will become a man or woman that will make an impact on neighborhoods, cities, and nations with the gospel. If you are ready for practical, hard-hitting instruction that is highly anointed by God, then Awesome is the place for you. Come to Abundant Life School of Ministry and discover your destiny in God. Visit www.alcc.org for more information. You're welcome to open your Bible to the book of, of Genesis chapter 1. And from Genesis 1, I will take you to Ezekiel 28 or to, um, and or to Isaiah 14. And from there, we'll uh, just see how much further we get uh, this evening in this particular series. This summer in our evening services, especially when I'm teaching, I'll be ministering oftentimes on a subject I, that I'm calling uh, In the Beginning. The reason this is so important to me is it appears that there are fundamental principles that are necessary to move into the plan of God in your life. And though many of those uh, have to be uh, like building blocks built forward. And today, uh, oftentimes, when people come to the house of God, they know very little about the Word of God. Now, I'm not talking about you. You're here on a, on a, on a Sunday night, so you're learning and growing, and you've got quite a handle on the Word, I trust. But uh, it's stunning how many people do not know very much about the Bible. They know little or, or, or nothing about the sinlessness, the sinless nature, the sinless life of Jesus Christ. If you talk about that, it just goes totally over their head. Like, uh, what, what do you mean, Jesus' sinless life? You mean he never, ever committed a sin? Like, ever? Never? And, of course, the answer is he never committed a sin. Uh, nor, or, or he could have never been the sinless sacrifice. Uh, the one who was uh, uh, offered up because he never had sin in his life. And so when you talk about anything that's just fundamental, that's basic Christianity 101, that he was born of a virgin. Over 40% of polled pastors that are in pulpits today do not believe or have a conviction that Jesus is actually virgin conceived. They do not believe that. That's in the pulpits in America, my friend. And uh, that number has been around for quite some time, and it seems to stay in those areas. Today, in the next five to seven years, uh, uh, a large majority of the pulpits and ministries in the United States today will have, uh, they will be turned over. There will be someone else there. A huge percentage of them will have quit the ministry, totally. That happens every single year because they do not have a revelation of the kingdom of God. They're preaching a doctrine. They're preaching a, a message of a denomination, or they are just preaching a, uh, uh, a particular concept and ministering that and without a revelation of the Word of God, it's very difficult for you to see the move of God in your life. But praise the Lord, if we'll hunger and thirst after righteousness, we'll be filled. Amen? Amen. And so the part of the absolute necessity of, of Christian living is to know where you've come from, who you are, and where you're going. Amen. We know where we came from. We know who we are in Christ. And we know where we're going in Christ. And uh, in this uh, series this summer, uh, you'll hear me talk about quite a few things that you might be taking them for granted because you know them already. Uh, but if not, it's good to refresh. Uh, other things, praise the Lord, uh, I trust you will enjoy and learn and grow and God will speak to you and the blessing of the Lord will be on us. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, God created, B-A-R-A, -A, bara. He created. Let me, let me give you just a little bit of Hebrew for a second. And so uh, in creation, it means to create something or to make something out of nothing. This particular application of that word means to make something out of nothing. When the scripture talks about God, it talks about Elohim. Elohim himself uh, is an extremely unique word. It's a singular word with a plural meaning. It's a Hebrew word. And that particular word is... is uh, 
uh, actually doesn't quite register with you and me because we do not do Hebrew and English uh, that doesn't have parallel. But it's exactly the opposite. This is a very, very unique word. We do not have an English word that, that defines it. We have one that denotes it. It's called God. God. It means singular and plural at the same time. Well, how can there be one God manifested three separate distinct ways? How can there be three in one? How can there be one in three? Well, it's very difficult because we are trained another way to think, but that's the way our God is. There's one God. He manifests himself three uh, distinct ways. In the book of Revelation, when John was in heaven, he saw two of them. He saw God, and he saw the one who sits on his right hand, who would be Jesus. Give me a big amen there. The one who was worthy to open up the books. The Bible doesn't say that he saw the Holy Spirit, but who knows, maybe the Holy Spirit was on the earth at that time. I'm not really sure. Uh, because that's when he was receiving the, the book of Revelation while he was on what's called the Isle of Patmos. Uh, that being said, uh, there is a, um, a necessity of understanding that in the beginning, the God who is all sufficient three in one, he's, he's all of those things, the, the true and living God, uh, the Bible says that out of nothing, he created something. In the beginning, God created from nothing to something. But he did it with his word. How many of you were in the morning service? Wave your hand if you were in the morning service. Then you saw in 2 Peter that the world that was formed was formed by the word of God. Did you see that this morning? If not, um, uh, let me read this one verse to you, and I trust that it will be a blessing to you. It's important to get this in your spirit. 2 Peter uh, chapter 3 says, uh, because they are, will, uh, they are uh, willing uh, to be ignorant of this fact that by the word of God, 2 Peter 3, 5, by the word of God, the heavens were of old. By the word of God. How did God create everything he created? By his word. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. How did he do it? He did it by his word. John chapter 1. When John is writing on the fourth book of the New Testament, when John writes, he says, uh, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, John 1.1. 1, 1. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. In the beginning was the Word. In heaven, the Bible says that Jesus is known, he is called the Word. The Word. In his pre-existence, pre, uh, pre-incarnation existence, he always has been, he always is, and he always will be. In heaven, he was known as the Word, the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And the three of them agree. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so John 1 is plain. It says that in, uh, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, I know that the cults try to change that because that is the key fundamental doctrine of everything. If you can change the fact that Jesus is the Word made flesh, if you can change the fact that he is the, uh, the create, creator of all things, and only God could create like that, if you can change that, then you and I just need to throw our hands up and say, man, we've been deceived. Let's get out of here, go eat, drink, and be merry, and tomorrow we die. The Apostle Paul said, if Jesus is not Lord, and if he is not who he says he is. But thank God he is who he says he is. Amen. Amen. Uh, John 1 says the word was uh, in the beginning uh, was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. Once again, the cults changed that, like Jehovah's, I like to call them the Jehovah's Witness, uh, that particular denomination. I'm not against any individual, I'm talking about that false doctrine. Uh, that particular doctrine says in their Bible, which they have changed, I don't care if they tell you it's the same Bible as yours, it is not. It's vastly changed. Uh, it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and then they just add a little, uh, a little word in there, a little preposition of some kind, it says, and the Word was a God. In the beginning was the Word, and it takes the capital G off and it lower cases it. It says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. And then they'll say, but you know, Jesus said, no, you're not that you are God's. And so they begin to humanize Jesus, the, 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 the deity of Jesus, and take that away because whoever their cult founder was did not believe uh, that uh, Jesus was divine. And so he pushed it like Mormonism. Mormonism teaches the same doctrine. So they, they pushed it another direction 
uh, and with, with both of those guys are involved heavily in witchcraft. And they push it a different direction, a direction, and they say, well, Jesus, of course, was in the Bible, and he had a lot of good stuff, but he was an angelic being. He was a brother of Lucifer. So they, they put him on the level, of course, of Lucifer, who the Bible calls a cherubim. And, um, uh, and we'll look at that maybe if we get to that this afternoon uh, in this series. And so he was a cherubim, and they say Jesus was a cherubim, that he was an angel, an angelic being. But Hebrews chapter 1 says that God never at any time called an angel his begotten son. But he did call Jesus his only begotten son. There are two words that are key. One is uh, the word uh, to create and the other is to make. And uh, those particular, or form, and those words, uh, that second word is the word A-S-A or A-S-H-A. Some uh, commentaries uh, give it. Uh, to the, the Asha or the Asa. And that particular word means to form or to make something from something. Versus the Bara, to make something from nothing. Well, God created heaven and earth, but he never uh, formed a, uh, an angel and called the angel his only begotten son. Jesus was not created. He was begotten. He came forth, the Bible says, out of the Father. I get pretty excited when I think about it. That God somehow manifested the, the plurality of his being. And when he made you, he made you in the likeness and the image of God. He put you in that same uh, dynamic of himself. God is one God manifested three separate eternal ways. It's called the Godhead. That's why we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But uh, Philippians 2 said that Jesus, even though he was in the form of a man, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. How many of you have read that in the Bible? Uh, he did not think that in any way violated or was an assault against God the fact that he was equal with God. That's because he was God in flesh, or as Isaiah calls him, Emmanuel, God in man. I'd like to talk to you just for a minute about one of the most sensitive subjects that anyone can ever experience, and that's the loss of a loved one, or a very strong tragedy when someone goes through that, how they hurt, how they're very pained on the inside, and how do they recover? Can they ever recover from the loss of a loved one? I've written a book entitled, The Big Why, and in this book, the Lord began to talk to me about the four reasons that something bad can happen to someone who is good. I'm very experienced in this particular understanding. My beautiful daughter, who was 18 years old, died prematurely years ago in an airplane accident. And when she went to heaven, the Holy Spirit visited me and began to talk to me about that powerful experience, about heaven itself. And then God began to talk to me about the four reasons that something bad like that can actually happen to such a good person. Now, you may know someone who's going through a very difficult time, or you might be personally going through a very, very tragic time. If you get a hold of this book, listen, it may save their life. It may save your life. It might help you overcome pain that's almost too difficult to verbalize. It'll even tell you how to talk sometimes in those unique matters. So go right to the website at walterhallam.com. Get your copy for yourself or a friend, and I'm excited to hear about your recovery. John 1 goes on and says that there was nothing made that was not made by him. That means that in the Garden of Eden, Jesus was in the Garden of Eden. As much as the Father was in the Garden of Eden, as much as the Holy Spirit was in the Garden of Eden. That's why God said, let us make man in our likeness and in our own image. Well, the us obviously couldn't have been an angel because I promise you that none of us were made in the likeness of angels in here. That's for sure. Uh, it's, I don't even want to get off on that because hallelujah. How many of you are glad we weren't made in the likeness and the image of angels? 
Come on, look at two people and say, I know you weren't made like an angel, that's for sure. That's so wrong. And, and so it is, uh, it is uh, necessary to understand that when God said, let us make man in our image and our likeness, that he was not talking about angels. He was talking about himself, uh, the Son, and the Spirit. Or the plurality of himself. And he made man and he formed him, the Bible says, from the dirt. He, he made him out of, uh, he made something out of nothing. Uh, he made something out of something. He formed him from the dirt. You and I were formed out of the dirt. Uh, uh, the scripture says, in the image and the likeness of God. Uh, the, the concept would be like the shadow or the outline, the form or the silhouette of God. It would be like me throwing my hand out here on the ground. And right here I have an image. Uh, there's a shadow. If I stand there, it throws a shadow. Imagine God putting his own shadow on the ground and going and outlining it, forming it, making a man in that image and standing him up. That's what he did. He made man. So if you want to know what God looks like, look in the mirror. You get to heaven, he still looks like a man. You say, is God some mystical? Well, the Bible doesn't imply that. Now, he took on seven different shapes. Jesus, I mean, forms or manifestations uh, for the sake of humanity and for his prophetic ministry. He can do whatever he wants to do. God can do whatever he wants to do. But seven different ways he... Uh, uh, showed himself uniquely in the scriptures. But when John saw him, with the most graphic picture that we have the description of Jesus in his post-resurrection appearance was on the Isle of Patmos. And there he had uh, eyes like flames of fire and hair just as white as snow. So hallelujah, those of you, how many of you glad that God has hair? Come on, men, we get hair in heaven. Woohoo! You don't have to be bald-headed in heaven if you don't want to be. Praise the Lord. And uh, so Jesus manifested himself uh, in more than one way, obviously, and he showed himself like that. Uh, in the beginning, uh, God created the heaven and the earth. That's the first creation. I adhere to uh, a concept uh, called a, a gap theory. Uh, and it's a theory only because uh, men have to put a word to it and to define it. I don't think it's a theory at all. I think the scripture is telling us what it's telling us. Uh, in the beginning, God created. Out of nothing, he made something. The heavens and the earth. There it is. Bam. It's done. Made. Created. That's why uh, when you read in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, when Peter is writing about that, he said the greatest ignorance that will happen in the last days is people will say that God did not create heaven and earth. And so uh, some people just kind of set off what I call ignorance bells. Ignorance alarms all around us. Ignorance alert. Let me read it to you again. 2 Peter chapter 3. For this they willingly are ignorant of. Uh, beginning in verse, verse 3. Knowing this first, this 2 Peter 3, 3. That there shall come in the last days, and get the, get the uh, teaching from this morning on the last days, scoffers, mockers, impadzo. Those who mock, scorn, disdain, make fun of, and uh, uh, literally mock. That in the last days, mockers will come walking after their own carnal desires. And they say, where is the promise of his coming? You say, Jesus is coming back. When is he coming back? For since the fathers sleep, fell asleep, one translation says, since men begin to die, ever since Adam all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. But I just want to tell you, that's the scoffer. That's the mocker that's saying that. Everything does not continue the way it is since the beginning of creation. Everything is constantly in the sink that God has it running in. And it is moving toward that next dispensation of the Lord. But the mockers are the ones who say that nothing is changing. That Jesus is never going to come back. That God's word is not true. But, praise the Lord, it is true. And uh, we might not understand fully everything about it. But we know this. That they willingly are ignorant, the Bible says, verse 5. That for this, for this reason, willingly they are ignorant of this fact. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. 
uh, the GE, the earth, the word uh, G. Uh, you see it all in the scriptures quite often in the uh, Greek. Uh, when God speaks about creation, he speaks about the earth, he speaks about the planet, he speaks about uh, what he has formed uh, as far as nature itself. He's talking about the earth, geology, G, geology, geography, uh, etc. Uh, those are the words we get from that, of course. And so the scripture says that God created that. He created the G. He created the earth. He created everything that has a nature to it. Uh, heavens and earth were made by him. And then the Bible says that the water and, and, and the earth itself that he had created, he separated them. He pulled the earth out of the water and in the water. Well, praise the Lord, you and I are out of the water and in the water. It's all around us, not even counting all the rain we've had. But our planet itself has so many uh, deep, deep pockets uh, in the oceans uh, some of them are 10 and 15 miles deep, they say. Every time one of these uh, huge airliners goes down in an area that's way out in a, uh, an area that hadn't uh, really been examined a lot, they'll say, well, it's 10 miles deep or it's 12 miles deep. This last one that went down, they have to go down 10 or 12 miles just to be able to find the actual uh, plane itself and trying to find that uh, black box that they're looking for with all of the uh, flight data on it. And so it hit, it's very deep and it's difficult to get to, but that's not the deepest place. There are others that are even deeper. And these huge, vast volumes of water that we can't even uh, equate them in gallons in reality, if the earth tilted just a little bit on its axis, we're told that the entire planet would flood with water. I mean, we think about going to the top of, uh, of uh, Mount Everest and uh, these people that just uh, died going up there from Australia. It was a terrible, terrible thing. But here they're trying to get to the top of Mount, Mount Everest and they're trying to get up there 25,000 or so uh, feet up in the air. Well, if you just divide that just for simple uh, math, you know, you're talking about seven miles, seven and a half miles or so up in the air. Imagine if you're 15 miles deep covered with water. You think it's tough to get up there. Think how tough it is to get down here. And, and then uh, it comes right up to the shoreline uh, of what we have all over the planet. But if we tilt a little bit, you could be under seven miles of water pretty quick across the, uh, the globe because there's more water than there is land, dry land. There's more water surface than there is dry land by far on the planet. And God pulled the earth out of the water and in the water. Thanks again for joining us on Abundant Life Today with Pastor Walter Hallam. 